I thought we'd address one of the comments and the questions that came in. This question came in from, uh, I think I say it, Natasia? Natasia Hamina? Natasia Hamina wrote this. This was so good, speaking to the last podcast that we did. I love hearing you both together. It really blessed me. Could you speak on feeling disconnected to your spouse? Mm. When you feel like you've tried counseling, connect groups, addressing the situation, et cetera, and it doesn't seem to be getting better, how do you move forward in that way? Mm. Now, obviously a pretty big question, but maybe we could kind of take it like, you've been married for 15 years, yeah. we'll hit 18 years in August. Mm. Uh, tomorrow, as we're recording this, will be 22 years of us being together. Yes. Wow. Did I say that right? Yeah. Wow. I love you. I love I, you. Hey, I do it all over again. I always play this game with Don She's like, if I, if I just walked up into this place right now and just saw you here and we were single, I'd still hit on you. I'd be like, <laughs> but why is it a game? <laughs> The idea, Julia, <laughs> in the romance is... It's, like, it, we play no games. Oh it's a long way We're to say, I do it. Serious? I do it over again. It's not a song. We, no, no, I make up my own melodies. <laughs> I make up my own 80s ballads. All right, let's try to address this question uh, a little bit. Connection, yeah. You guys, have you guys been to counseling before? Yes. How was that? How was that for you, babe? Well, I really, I really like going to counseling together. I feel like, uh, I feel like I'm a little bit more favored uh, in our counseling. Basically, what Chad is saying is that we had this marriage counselor that loved Chad a lot more than he favored like me. Like all the homework would be for Julia, and no. none of it would be for me. It was not. And so I felt so validated. The entire experience. It was not. So, no, no, to no. answer your question, okay. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, had, he had me look at Chad, and he said, through the eyes of Chad's Abba father, mm. I want you mm. to tell him. To father your husband. That's like a beautiful parallel. Basically, that I, like I am God the father. And I need to communicate. Talk about some weird role how play. How proud I am of him. And I had to look at him and tell him how proud I was as God. I mean, it feels a little weird to be God. So did you say, "You are my son, whom I love, <laughs> and <laughs> I am well, well pleased"? pleased. <laughs> um, and then a and, dove came. And out. then I had to pray for him. But weirdly, Chad didn't have to pray for me. Chad didn't have to <laughs> affirm me. <laughs> so I just thought the counselor was very discerning. <clears throat> <laughs> So you guys have been to counseling. <laughs> yeah. Uh, DC sees a counselor. I talked to a counselor. Mm. Haven't done nearly enough counseling together, mm -hmm. but I think all of us in all the handles and things that we're working on have had seasons where we feel mm -hmm. disconnected. Mm. I think the question is actually kind of a beautiful question because, um, you know, just because something is old doesn't mean something has to become stale. Mm. So I think Great. really what we're talking about a little bit today is how to keep your marriage fresh, how to yes. keep your relationship fresh. I like that word new. Yes. Uh, new means unused. Mm. Right. But the truth is, is that DC's used me, I've used her, you've used Chad. Like we've all, it, it's, it's an old marriage. So I'm not after new, but I am after fresh. How do we keep yeah. the marriage mm. fresh? Dontree, what would you say in terms of in the seasons that we've been together all these years, seasons that you felt disconnected? Is there things that you've learned from that? Things that you helped kind of get back to, uh, back to me or back to healthy communication, healthy, healthy connection? Well, I think first of all, in relationships, you have like the, the thought patterns of a relationship, like the way that you view someone. And I think that is the deeper work. And then mm. there's external things that can make all the difference. So like, if you want to talk about the heart work, I think that the heart work for me is always assuming the best. Because if there's not connection, then a lot of times you're just taking what you're seeing at face value because there isn't intimacy and you're making assumptions. And so I think something I'm challenged in, in all my relationships, is what 1 Corinthians 13 says. Like, it assumes the best. It mm. believes the best Great. in the other person. Great. I think the fight is there because you can create a whole other narrative in your mind and there's opportunity for connection, but you've shut mm. it down. Your, sh your assumptions shut the door mm. on any opportunity for connection. Mm. And then I think from like a practical, like been together for 22 years um, viewpoint, I think like staying fresh yourself creates mm. a fresh Very marriage. Good. So continuing to grow. Right. We were so joking because like, 
you've been asking me to work out for like ever. You want, you've want you noticed such a difference in your brain, the way you mm. think, the way you feel yeah. at work, the way that you have sustained energy throughout the day and don't come home just exhausted. Like you've always told me, I think you'll love it, but it wasn't until this year that I decided mm-hmm. to do it. And I, I'm only three months in and it's made the biggest difference in my life. And I could have listened to you all those years ago, but stepping into this has given me a fresh perspective. It's given mm-hmm. us something new to connect on. And I think mm-hmm. my mom would always say to me, like, in a marriage, like, keep bringing new things to the table. Mm-hmm. Um, don't don't just stay the same, like mm-hmm. like what this podcast is called. Mature. You mm-hmm. want to mature. And if both of us mature, then we continue to have new things to talk about because we're both growing. Mm-hmm. So right. as we're both learning, then now our conversation begins to expound. It begins to, uh, you know, just mm-hmm. grow in ways that we didn't talk when we were 17 years old. No, it's really good. Have you guys ever heard of this study? And I hate when people actually do that because it's like, no, we haven't. But it's, it's a study called the end of history illusion. Hmm. It's a really, really powerful concept. And the study, what it does is, is that all of us, humanity at large, thinks that wherever you're at today, how old are you? I'm 39. How old are you? 41. How old are you? 44. And I'm 39. We all kind of right now today go, all right, I've changed a lot from, from 41 or 40. Hmm. When I was 22, like, oh, I changed a lot. I'm, t- I'm such a different person. Mm. But somehow we have this belief that we're done changing. Mm. Yeah. So my preferences, what I like, my style, my Very coffee good. drink, the movies yeah. that I like, what's fun, what's not fun, what attracts yeah. me, what turns mm. me on. None of that's ever going to change. I changed a lot, yeah. but I'm done changing wow. now. Wow. And I think the, when you're talking about the assumption, I think the assumption of what happens in a relationship, what makes something stale in a relationship is that I live with Don Cherie. So I see her this close. Yeah. Yep. I can make such allowances for Ch- Chad and I were at lunch. I was like, bro, you could do things that if I had to go home with, I would flip on you. You would kill me. But we don't. We, we have lunch and then we don't see each other for a month. And so it creates yeah. a lot of allowances. Mm-hmm. But we go home with the person that we're in love with and we're mm. this close. Yeah. And because I'm this close like to you, the change, yes. it's, it's like my kids. If you don't see my kids for a month, you're like, Rich, Wyatt. Yeah. is this tall yeah but i don't see how tall he is because he's yeah. right in front of me mm. and it's the same thing with our spouses that they're changing right before our eyes mm. but we get we get so segmented on a season of their life and we just keep going oh they're never going to change and i just assume i already know who she is wow. mm-hmm. when she's actually much different one year later than she was last year that's right and, th- and it's the learning that leads to loving mm. yeah so yes. i love that and I, and I think you know we've been talking about this uh, as of late julia got into reading and I've, I've it, it, I got into reading. She started reading this yeah, year. Hey. Yeah. Listen, guys. Took her, took her 41 <laughs> years. I learned to read at 41 years old. I want to. Give to, yourself a hug, Julia. To he, to he, to he. It's a hug. It's a it's, hug. It's, it's the. That's yeah. a hard one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In context. Yeah. Yeah. She got into reading. Yeah. She started reading like crazy. Like just. Yeah. We've been married for 15 years. And. This became like her ho- her new hobby, mm. and I I loved watching. It reminds me even you know, at night she's reading her book. When we're in the car, she's reading her book. <laughs> Anytime I want to talk to her, she's reading her book. It's been f- fantastic for her. I don't know about our relationship really, but I know. But <laughs> I think I think that that what's very fun, and we all know this, is that the person that you love so much is changing. And you have to constantly stay as a student. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where are they now? There you go. That's what, mm-hmm. where, where, where. Very good. Oh, she's she's in a reading now. Three years ago, not like this. This is really cool. Where are you at in friendships? Very good. Mm-hmm. How do you feel as a parent? And I think, um, I don't like that phrase. It feels too, um, I'll just use the word gross. If you don't date your wife, somebody else will. I don't mm-hmm. like that language. I'd like to approach it from the standpoint, if I don't really lean in and learn my spouse and figure her this iteration of her out, I might not be able to connect with her. I might not be able to garner the trust that I really need and we need to move forward. So I think, you know, as a person that we, we, you know, we talk about leadership a lot. I think in marriage, you're leaning into that other person to figure out who this person is so we can connect and we can move forward together, not holding them hostage to who they used to be and who we used to be as a couple. 